Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video we're going to be doing a 12 team PPR mock draft from the first overall spot using Fantasy Pros. Draft Wizard, the roster positions for today's mock draft are one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, flex kicker defense and five bench spots but before we could do a nice deep dive into this mock draft I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure you leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton so without further ado let's get into this 12 team PPR mock draft from the number one overall spot now in prior mock drafts we were doing one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, and one flex spot plus the kicker and defense. Or we are doing one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and two flex spots with the kicker and defense. So the difference in losing one wide receiver spot or the additional flex is that the wide receiver position isn't as much of a premium because in those drafts, you could rip off four wide receivers to start the draft, and you could start all of those wide receivers on your team. You could start them in the three wide receiver leagues, three wide receiver spots. You obviously have to start three wide receivers, and then the other one in the flex spot. Or in two wide receiver drafts with two flexes, you could start two in the wide receiver spot, two in the flex spot. Whereas here, at all times, we can only be starting three wide receivers. Now, I am an advocate of if you're the commissioner of your league or if you play in a league where you think you can try and almost start an uprising and try to go ahead and add more flex positions add more wide receiver spots i think that the more players in your starting spots the better if you're an experienced player because you are going to be able to win with more depth your player takes are going to be more important and in a league like this, we might draft four wide receivers in this draft that are amazing that you want to start every single week, but you might get cucked out of being able to start one of them. And you actually will be because you can only start three wide receivers at a time. So there is a little bit different of a strategy. With that said, at the number one overall spot, I'm going Christian McCaffrey basically every single time. I'm not going to debate with you if you'd rather go with CD Lamb or Tyreek Hill at that pick it is definitely a lot more of a debate in a three wide receiver or in a two wide receiver and a flex league but in this spot i'm gonna go with christian mccaffrey the only argument against christian mccaffrey is that he's getting a little bit old and nick what happens if he gets hurt sure anyone can get hurt though christian mccaffrey has proven to us that he is one of the most elite running backs in the national football league he has proven to us that he can be the running back one in fantasy football, he is on one of the better offenses in the NFL with a solid offensive line. And to me, there is no reason to believe that he will finish outside the top three at the running back position. And it wouldn't be shocking at all. Obviously, we drafted him number one overall if he was the number one overall running back yet again. After Christian McCaffrey, CeeDee Lamb, Tyree Kill, Bijan Robinson, Jamar Chase, Brees Hall, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross, St. Brown, AJ Brown, Puka Nakua, Jameer Gibbs closes out the first round. The second opens with Maserati, Marvin Harrison Jr., Saquon Barkley, Drizzy Drake, London, Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Kyron Williams, Devontae Adams, Devin, Two Chains, Chris Olave, Brandon Ayuk, and Josh Allen. I think we are going to see while in your more competitive leagues, I think a quarterback probably won't come off the board until the third round. With how shaky the second round looks, it's not really all that surprising to see a guy like Josh Allen come off the board at the 2.11. None of the picks here were really all that egregious. While I am getting lower and lower on Kyron Williams because I'm starting to worry about Blake Corm, I'm worried about the injury, I'm worried about Kyron Williams' injury history. Right now... Our knowledge isn't necessarily the best on this situation. In August, it'll be a lot more clear, so I'm not going to sit here and belittle the computer for taking him at the 206, but I definitely would not have done that. So we are back up on the clock here, and with one running back already on our squad, you're definitely going to want to go with at least one wide receiver here. Looking at the wide receivers, Mike Evans, DJ Moore, and Nico Collins are best available. I was a huge Mike Evans guy last season. The discount was great for him, but now he hops back into the late second or early third round. And while I still kind of think Chris Godwin might be dust for fantasy football, he obviously 
isn't just some schlub going out there. So that kind of hurts. Is Baker Mayfield legit or not? Like, I just don't know if I want to A, the Piper here and draft Mike Evans in the second round. My pick would be probably either DJ Moore or Nico Collins at this pick, and it is up for debate. Both of these guys are in wide receiver rooms that are loaded to the gills, but I believe both of these guys have the upside to be top five wide receivers in fantasy football this season. We are going to lean with DJ Moore, but again, if I was doing a draft, if I'm doing 10 drafts from the 101 and I start Christian McCaffrey every single time in the second round, I would probably rotate between, again, while I am a little bit worried about Mike Evans, probably drafting DJ Moore four times, drafting Nico Collins four times, and then maybe sprinkling in Debo, Mike Evans, the other two times. So we're going to go ahead and go with DJ Moore here. Wiki Wiki, I love DJ Moore this season. I truly believe he's the clear wide receiver one on the Chicago Bears. Sure, they have Keenan Allen. And while I think Keenan Allen will be fine, and while I like Roma Dunze, DJ Moore is the best wide receiver in this offense. To me, he is the clear wide receiver one on an offense that I think is going to move up to a whole nother level with Caleb Williams under center. So I'm very excited about DJ Moore this season and will happily take him inside of the second round. Now we're back up again. And I think I am going to potentially fall into a trap here. Based upon what I know about fantasy football drafts right now, if I take a running back, while I'm going to love having McCaffrey paired with ETN, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, pick your poison. The wide receiver that comes back at the end of the fourth round is going to be a little bit disgusting. Now, I'm not going to sit here and belittle whichever wide receiver falls to us because there are going to be wide receivers I like in every single pocket of the draft, but I know for sure the running backs in the fourth round, I will probably like more than the wide receivers. So I think while it would be awesome to have that one-two punch of McCaffrey and Rashad White, McCaffrey and Pacheco, McCaffrey and Travis Etienne, I am going to go with a wide receiver. If you wanted to go with Sam Laporta here, I wouldn't debate with you. If you wanted to go Kelsey, wouldn't debate with you either. I'm definitely someone that isn't necessarily completely off the reservation when it comes to drafting a quarterback earlier, but I don't really feel the need in a 12-team league to force the narrative here and draft Jalen Hurts when... I know there are a lot of quarterbacks I like in this middle range. So it's either going to be Mike Evans or Nico Collins. Since in the majority of drafts, I would take Nico Collins. We are going to go with Mike Evans this time. Now, we did talk about some potential negatives, some potential drawbacks to Mike Evans, right? Maybe he regresses from what we saw last season. 139 targets, 79 receptions, 13 touchdowns. 1200 yards. I think it's entirely possible that he does end up repeating that though. This guy is a monster in terms of build wise. He could catch really anything thrown his way. And in the red zone, they are going to utilize him very heavily. Now, I do believe since the interior offensive line should look better this year for the Bucs, that they are going to be more effective with running the ball inside of the green area. So I am somewhat worried about touchdown regression. But again, if there was someone that was going to score a lot of fucking touchdowns, it would be Mike Evans, right? This is a guy that has scored over 12 touchdowns, one, two, three, four, five times in his career. He's been over a thousand yards every single year of his career. He's done it with not the best quarterbacks. He's done it with Tom Brady. He's done it with Baker Mayfield. He could easily do it again. So when I make those somewhat negative remarks about Mike Evans, there is, at least in my opinion, some reasons to be slightly worried. He's getting older, but I think in the third round, you can't really go wrong with him. So we are going to go with him here. And again, I don't want you guys to every single draft just take the same players. And especially in these mock drafts, I don't want to just talk about the same players every single time. And again, if you're in 10 drafts, you should not be taking McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Mike Evans every single time if they all fell to you. Because if one of those guys gets hurt, then all 10 of your battleships have been sunk Instead of if you're just kind of switching things around, then the odds that you get bent over a fucking table without the use of lube is going to be a lot lower. So after you went ahead and drafted Magic 
Mike Evans. We see that Travis Etienne came off of the board, followed by Sam Laporta, Nico Collins, Debo Samuel, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Rashad White, Jalen Hurts, James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco, and Stefan Diggs. To close out the third round, the third round of drafts right now appears to be very running back heavy. Now, I think when more of the casual players start to draft, the running backs are going to move more into the first round. Right now, it's basically three or four in a majority of drafts you see in the first round. I think come late August, it could be as high as five or six. And in the more boomer rooms, the running back heavy rooms, the old head rooms, you might see six or seven running backs come off the board if we're being honest with you. So very heavy third round for the running back position. The fourth round opens with my man, Joe Mixon, followed by Mr. Swift, Travis Kelsey, Malik Neighbors, Jayla Waddle away, Waddle Waddle, Mark Andrews, Devontae Smith, Patrick Mahomes, Kenneth Walker, Alvin Kamara, Lamar Jackson, and DK Metcalf. So again, our roster right now, CMC, DJ Moore, Mike Evans. Anthony Richardson is an incredibly interesting pick with one of these picks. Anthony Richardson has the upside to be the quarterback one. We talked about it in yesterday's video. Guys that are going to break out, Anthony Richardson in two out of four games was a top five quarterback. The problem is, is that he kept getting hurt last year and could not stay healthy. And everything that I've read into the situation tells you that Anthony Richardson Feels as though that was almost a little bit fugazi, a wazi, a woozy, it was a fluke, and he's going to keep playing the same way. Which could be great for fantasy. If he doesn't get hurt, he could end up as the quarterback one. But if he keeps playing like that, he keeps putting himself in severe danger, and he gets his fucking AC joint falls off the bone, knock on wood, we don't root for injuries, then it's a little bit scary, okay? So he's very boom or bust. Look at the rest of the board here. At running back, Aaron Jones, Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, DeAndre Swift. At wide receiver, Cooper Cup, Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, Zay Flowers, and T. Higgins. While I like Anthony Richardson, while I like C.J. Stroud, and while I like Trey McBride, I think I'm probably going to draft at least one wide receiver here and might go with a running back with the other pick. Now, if this was a three wide receiver league, I would tap both pause no diddy i would tap both amari cooper and zay flowers here but we'll only be able to get one which might push me towards going and securing that elite tight end because i believe by the time things come back in the sixth round my guy can kate will be gone i like evan ingram but he might be gone as well pitts might be gone depending on if there's a tight end run so i think Going with Trey McBride might low-key be the move here. I think Trey McBride has as good of a shot as Sam Laporta or Travis Kelsey as being the tight end number one. Trey McBride last season played very well despite having very low expectations on him. If Kyler Murray is able to stay healthy all season and with Maserati Marv as the wide receiver one there, I still think Trey McBride is going to be peppered in targets heavily and will be the number two target on this team. He has a lot of red zone upside, touchdown upside. So I like him. With that said, if you guys have watched a lot of these mock drafts, we typically take a tight end early. It's been something that I haven't done in years past this year. I It's just kind of where they're falling, right? In the fourth, fifth round, I love getting a tight end that could easily be the tight end number one, right? In years past, Kelsey, that bastard was going in the first fucking round, right? You would have to pay up to get a tight end, whereas now you could kind of chill out and wait until the end of the second, the third round, to take that tight end. You want the number one tight end uh, off the board, which is Sam Laporta. So while we normally go tight end, again, I try to switch things up in these mock drafts. We won't go early tight end this time. So we're definitely getting Amari Cooper. I think Amari Cooper is incredibly undervalued right now. Amari Cooper is the clear, undisputed wide receiver one on the Cleveland Browns. I get that Deshaun Watson is a little bit shaky, like a bed in a Mormon college at BYU soaking season, but I really do think that Amari Cooper will be fine regardless. This dude was putting up numbers with the fucking carcass of cool Joe Flacco, the mummification of Joe Flacco. So I like Amari Cooper a lot here in the fourth or the fifth round. So now the question is, do we go with Trey McBride? 
because we do want to get him. Do we go running back or do we go quarterback? I think, again, we are going to kind of fade away Michael Jordan style from the tight end and either go quarterback or running back. I like Aaron Jones, but the more I look into it, the more I start to be a little bit more pessimistic. Now, if this guy stays healthy, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he was literally a top five running back. But Nick, uh, don't you don't you read the fact that he's age 29? He's basically basically a grandpa at this point. He's been playing since 2017. What concerns me is the injuries that have kind of plagued him throughout his career. Only 11 games played last year. But if he does play 17 games, even with Ty Chandler there getting touches, I understand that he's on just a one year deal. But I really think he has the pass catching ability, the rushing upside to rip off a top three season. But again, there is that injury concern in the back of my head. I think this time we are going to hunt for the most upside. And that is going with Anthony Richardson over CJ Stroud. I think when you're comparing these two second year quarterbacks, it's very simple. They both have great upside. CJ Stroud is just 9,000 times safer. He has Stefan Diggs. He has Tank Dell. He has Nico Collins. Anthony Richardson has Michael Pittman and a ragtag group of wide receivers and tight ends. Anthony Richardson could rush for a gazillion yards. CJ Stroud is not going to do that. Anthony Richardson might end up getting hurt a lot easier, whereas CJ Stroud, less likely, but I'm as much of a doctor as Johnny Sins. Even with that said, we all know that injuries can happen to anyone, right? I could go walk up the stairs after this video to go get some fucking milk out the fridge and stub my toe, fall down the stairs like Peter Griffin in that One Family Guy episode and just end up all messed up. Injuries can happen to anyone. So we're going Anthony Richardson. We're hunting for the upside again. If you want to be super safe, oh, Nick, I'm scared. In the fifth round, even though you don't have to be super safe in the fifth round, I'm scared. Uh, then don't draft Anthony Richardson. But, man, oh, man, this is a guy that really could be a league winner. He was a guy that I was banging the drum for all of last offseason. It paid off for a little bit until he got hurt, but I am really excited about Anthony Richardson this season. After Anthony Richardson, we see Cooper Cup followed by A.A. Ron Jones, Ramondre Stevenson, Tank Dell, DeAndre Swift, David Montgomery, Zay Flowers, Raheem, The Wet Dream, Mostert, Trey McBride, T. -T Higgins, and Keenan Allen. I am as much of a Raheem Mostert stan as anyone. No way, Jose, am I taking him in the fifth round, though. That's egregious. Uh, after Keenan Allen, the sixth round opens with Dalton Kincaid, Zamir White, CJ Stroud, Jalen Warren, Joe Shiesty, Kyle Pitts, Christian Kirk, George Kittlemy Timbers, Evan Ingram, James Conner, and Tony Pollard. So if we didn't draft Richardson, very, very likely that he would not have been available at this spot. A bunch of tight ends came off the board, though. So now we are kind of in what I would describe as tight end purgatory we have David Njoku who showed a lot last season but didn't really show the most with Deshaun Watson under center so I would rather wait later and take more of an upside shot than draft a guy like David Njoku at running back we have Javante Williams Najee Harris Tajay Spears Javante Williams is basically as off my board as you can get I think, and I thought, B5 Fofo, I thought coming into the NFL, out of college, this guy had the skills to pay the bills. This guy was going to be the next up-and-coming elite running back, potentially, in the NFL, and it hasn't worked out. I understand that last year he entered the year injured, right, and he didn't play necessarily the best, only 3.6 yards per attempt. And I get that he's a decent player and all, but from what I've read from Sean Payton, it seems like this could be a running back by committee. It seems like Javante Williams isn't even guaranteed to be the number one head honcho back in this backfield. Najee Harris is also disgusting because of what he has done to us in the past. But even with that dumb bastard Arthur Smith there, I feel like the Steelers offense will be better this season. And he's a very safe bet to rip off over a thousand yards as my running back, too, with Christian McCaffrey, when I already have such high upside at quarterback, I got the receivers that I like. I'm going to take Najee Harris. I think Javante Williams' upside might be slightly higher, but there is just way more risk, in my opinion, with Javante Williams. I honestly still do kind of believe that Jalen Warren might be better than Najee Harris. 
but I'm going to go with Najee Harris here, even though it feels absolutely disgusting. So after we went ahead and drafted Najee Harris, I think we're going to have to double dip at the running back position at this spot, because again, while I like Jake Ferguson, since so many tight ends have came off the board, it is very plausible that he could maybe make it back to us in the next round. I am not drafting Javante Williams, though, and I honestly don't want to draft Ajay Spears in the seventh round either. So I think we're just going to pass up on the running back position and just go hammer time like that fucking MC Hammer song on running backs later and just take another wide receiver to potentially fill in if something was to happen to DJ Moore, Mike Evans, or Mark Cooper. Maybe we don't like the matchup. We could fill other guys in there. If I didn't already draft Najee Harris, I'd be fine drafting George Pickens, but George Pickens to me, while I think the offense is going to be better, like, am I really sold on Mr. Unlimited or Justin Fields just force-feeding the ball to Pickens? Like, I think they're going to try to establish the run a lot, run the rock. So I want to go with Terry McLaurin here. I like Jaden Reed a little bit better, but I also think they might be back in the eighth round if we don't end up going hammer time on the running back, if we just want to continue to push running backs down the board and then just draft a bunch to close out the draft. So I want to go ahead and go with Terry McLaurin. Hopefully, Jaden Daniels is his best quarterback of his career. We've been saying this for years. Oh, man, I can't wait for Terry McLaurin to finally have good quarterback play. And that just never happened. But this is a guy that has so much skill. He's just been basically fucked over by the quarterback situation. So I think things should get better for Terry McLaurin this season. But again, I probably sound like a broken record at this point if you've been watching me for a while because I've always believed in Terry McLaurin and the quarterback just has always been, as they would say in Espanol, no bueno. After Terry McLaurin, we got Calvin Ridley, George Pickens, Kyler Murray, Javante Williams, Hollywood, Brown, Dak Prescott, Brian Robinson Jr., Roma Dunze, Zach Moss, Jordan, love me tender, love me sweet, Caleb Williams, Devin Singletary, Deontay Johnson, Austin Eckler, Chris Godwin, Nine Inch, Nicholas Chubb, Rashi, Rice, the Jailbird, Jordan Addison, Trey Benson, Jaden Riley Reed, Tajay Spears, and DeAndre Hopkins, back-to-back -back Titans, Hurts like a butt cheek on a stick because I did really want to get Tajay Spears. But now, truly is time to go hammer mode on running back more than likely. Now, in a vacuum, I prefer JSN way more than these other guys, but we have kind of entered into a mode where we've backed up against the wall and we need some running backs. First, though, we're going to get our tight end. We're going to get Jake Ferguson. Fergalicious is now... Again, probably the number two target on the Dallas Cowboys outside of C.D. Lom. They really don't have a lot of weapons there that are very consistent. This is going to be a solid offense yet again in Dallas. So Jake Ferguson, to me, in the, the later rounds is basically a no-brainer. I like him way better than David Njoku. I think that the consensus here is very wrong on David Njoku. Again, I do like to diversify the revenue in a way. Shout out to Nick Ercolano. You said it all the time. But... Man, I, I, I don't think I'm going to have much David Njoku this season because he was fucking invisible. He was the invisibility cloak on until we saw cool Joe Flacco come out there. So after Jake Ferguson, we get to pick again. While I like JSN a lot better than these players, I think going with who I believe will be the lead back on the Chargers in the ninth round makes a lot of sense. Gus Edwards, I get it. He's not the best running back. He sometimes looks like he's running through quicksand. He will probably not average a lot of yards per carry. That's just not what he does. He's not going to be ripping off. Actually, that was a lie, I guess. I was a little fugazi because he's been averaging five yards per attempt every single season outside of last year. But I don't think of Gus as a guy that would probably... But again, that's uh, not the most amount. I guess it was a lot of touches, so maybe I'm just speaking out of my ass here. Nick, you idiot! I don't think he's going to average the most yards per carry here in LA, but I do know one thing though, and that is that Harbaugh wants to run, run, run the rock gently down the stream, and we are going to see so much Gus Edwards this season. So this is a guy that on the goal line is just fucking slippery. He always finds his way into the end zone. So we're going to go ahead and go with Gus Edwards and just Wipe your mind of what I said about how he doesn't average a lot of yards per carry. I guess that was just me being a little bit stupid. After we went ahead and drafted Gus Bus Edwards, JSN, Ezekiel Elliott, Jonathan Brooks, Big Cock Brock Purdy, 
Keon Coleman, Chase Brown, Blake Corm, Ladd McConkey, Jerome Ford, Zach Charbonnet, Kendra Miller, Xavier Worthy. Fast as fuck, boy. Cortland Sutton, Chuba Hubbard, Brian Robinson, or Brian Thomas Jr., I apologize. Roshan Johnson, Christian Watson, Mike Williams, Curtis Samuel, Jameson Williams, Antonio Gibson, Tyler Lockett in my pocket. Now we get to continue to draft high upside running backs. If something happens to Mr. Aaron Jones, the sky is the limit for Ty Chandler. I think this is going to be an offense that wants to run the ball. Obviously, they're going to throw a lot to Justin Jefferson. They just gave him a big, fat paycheck. But I think Ty Chandler could pay off greatly in the 10th round if he gets a lot of work. If something was to happen to Aaron Jones, knock on wood. So after we went ahead and drafted Ty Chandler, it might be time to draft another running back. Because again, outside of Christian McCaffrey, Gus Edwards, Ty Chandler is a little bit suspect of a running back room. Now, the thing about targeting running backs late in fantasy football drafts is that is where you can find the golden ticket, right? That is where you can find the potential league winner. Kyron Williams last season, right? The guys, Devon A-Chain, a guy that I banged the drum for aggressively last season. Now, it is June. Shout out to Flight. While I love doing these mock drafts, eight-round running backs become a lot easier to, to shuffle through in August, late August, because we've seen the preseason, we've seen the depth charts, we've seen the hype out of training camp, all that, that, you know, sometimes might lead us astray, right? It, it might lead us into drafting someone that doesn't even really touch the ball. But it could also be a very, and that's why you kind of have to be able to skim through what you read and understand, like, what's a bunch of bullshit and what's actually true, but that at times is still hard to kind of figure out. But a lot easier in August to figure that out than it is now. Would it be surprising at all if Rico Dowdle started over Ezekiel Elliott? I think it would be, but Zeke isn't the Zeke from Prime back in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, that range, right? Or world went to shit, right? <laughs> so Rico Dowdle, would you be completely shocked if he was the running back one? I wouldn't on a great offense. I'm going to take that shot here in the 11th round. We'll close out our draft with a wide receiver. We don't need a backup quarterback or a backup tight end. I get if you wait for Jake Ferguson drafting a second tight end, but if you pay up, you pay that price for Anthony Richardson. If you draft another quarterback, when are you ever going to play? Nick, Anthony Richardson is going to get hurt, you idiot. But say you're drafting Anthony Richardson as if he's not going to get hurt at all. So there's no need to handcuff him, in my opinion. There's no need because you're never going to play Kirk Cousins over Anthony Richardson. Like 99.99999% of the simulations, you're not playing him. So after Rico, Dowdle, David Njoku, Jacoby, Myers, Brock, Bowers, Jalen Wright, Dallas Goddard, Marshawn, Lloyd, Xavier, somebody touch my leggette, Pat Fryermuth, Adani Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins, Ray Davith, uh, Dalton Schultz, Justin Herbert, the pervert, Tyler... Algier, Khalil Herbert, Galil McLaughlin, Ty Chandler, defense, Tua, Kamani Vidal, defense, defense. So we're going to go receiver here. We are going to go uh, kind of like Romeo Dobbs, but we do kind of love just taking these Packers in every video. So we're going to go a different way. If we didn't draft Terry McLaurin, I would shoot the shot on Jahan Dotson. This time... Let's go with Gabe Davis. Now, Gabe Davis has fooled us many times. He was a guy that I was not really on board with at all last season, but the prior season, I was essentially giving this guy the Gawk Gawk 9000 special all summer long and just ended up essentially with nothing. In Jacksonville, I don't think he's going to be the number one target, but I think... Maybe he ends up as the number two guy, and with the upside he possesses game in and game out to have that two-plus touchdown game with Trevor Lawrence touchdown, Jesus under center, I am going to take him here. I think in the late rounds, you're essentially good to just close your eyes and scroll down, like, and draft whoever you want, right? Like, I'm not judging you if you want to draft Rashad Bateman. Like, there's been some Rashad Bateman hype. If you want to draft Jalen Polk, go right ahead. I don't think you're really reaching late. It might tell us that we reached, but I don't think that at this section of the draft and you're this late in, you're really reaching at all. So where's Gabe Davis? There. Went ahead and drafted Gabe Davis. 
And now we have to draft a kicker and a defense. Now, the way you draft a defense in fantasy football is easy, in my opinion. What you want to do is you want to draft a defense that's playing a not-so-hot offense in week number one. While a lot of people draft their defense and you play them every single week, while the Jets' defense is great on paper, they're going to run into some great offenses, right? So now we can go ahead and just not draft a team and have to play them every single week. We can just cycle through them every single week. I make videos every single week on which defense to stream. I'll make a video before you actually draft in August, which defense to draft for week one. And then in week one, if you didn't draft those defenses, you didn't listen to me and you're like, oh, fuck. Nick, I drafted the Jets and they're playing the 49ers. I'm scared. Uh, and then there's going to be some other defenses for you guys to pick up. The Cleveland Browns in week numero uno are going up against the Cowboys. That's not great either. The Chiefs are playing the Ravens. L to the Nah. The Steelers are playing the Falcons. That would be fine. The Bills are playing the Cardinals. Let's go with the Steelers. I am definitely an Atlanta Falcons stand this year with Kirk Cousins under center and with Arthur Smith sent a pack in. But what I will tell you is that I think game one of Kirk coming off the Achilles, he might start slow. This is a new head coach, new system, might just start a little bit slow. The Steelers have a great defense. They got TJ Watt to send Kirk Cousins into the metaphorical shadow realm during the game. Not rooting for an injury, obviously, just fucking hit him a bunch of times. So I think the Steelers defense will be great. But again, I'm not going to sit here and do some crazy in-depth breakdown right now. June. And things will change, right? Like some of these, like I might love the Steelers defense right now. And then come late August when it's time for you to actually draft, maybe TJ Watt gets hurt again, knock on wood, some injury happens, or maybe the Falcons just look ferocious in preseason and then I get scared. And then we're going to draft a kicker. We are going to draft Matt. Ah, yay! In the 14th round. Kickers right now. Again, I'm not going to do some deep dive in kickers. Draft him. Actually, let's just go with the highest ranked kicker. We'll go with Kerio. Santos. Now we got to see if you do your draft and get a bad draft grade, what you should do is just not care. Draft grade doesn't matter at all. I'm not going to look into this. Some of these guys will be like, oh, Nick, you, you idiot. Don't care. Uh, so our team is Anthony Richardson, Christian McCaffrey, Najee Harris. Our receivers are Wiki Wiki, DJ Moore, Mike Evans. Our tight end is Jake Ferguson. Our flex is Mari Cooper. So starting roster wise outside of Najee Harris, I love this team. I love this team. Now, if I didn't take Richardson, Drafted a running back there instead, and then maybe went quarterback later. I might have liked my team better, but again, I'm trying to experiment, do different things in these drafts. Our bench, McLaurin, Gus Edwards, Ty Chandler, Rico Dowdle, Gabe Davis. So as long as one of Gus Edwards, Ty Chandler, or Rico Dowdle end up paying off, or maybe Najee Harris is just great, or I find someone off the waiver wire, this team to me looks very competitive every single week, has the opportunity to lay a smackdown brother. Shout out to all you Hulkamaniacs out there any given week so thank you guys all so much for watching if you end up enjoying make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below whether you are new to the channel or not make sure you guys leave a like on today's video again the underdog best ball drafts are coming i know people are like nick you ought to do the best ball drafts i will do them don't worry about it they'll be live though make sure you guys check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already love you guys have a great one as always good boy